Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the repower on the Bertram 31. This is the Volvo Penta D4 at 300 horsepower. And it's an impressive little package. It produces 300 horsepower at 3,500 RPMs. It weighs 1,279 pounds with the HS68A that we chose in two to one gear reduction. This engine comes in a very compact package. It's approximately 32 by 32 by 32, and then add about a foot for that ZF gear. Now, when you look at the torque, it produces about 700 Newton meters at 2600 RPMs. That's the dotted line in the middle for the 300 horsepower. And the horsepower at 2600 RPMs is just about 270 horsepower. And if we go down and look at the fuel consumption, we would be burning about 14 gallons an hour for the pair. So those were the D4s. These are the 454s that are coming out. We're going to remove the cockpit side panels, cockpit uh, rear panel, and then remove the deck. That's the 454s getting derigged. We'll come back to this, this propeller, shaft angle, tip clearance. We're gonna get much more detailed on this. That's the shaft pulled back off the coupler. This is the footprint of the isolators. And here we're doing a mock-up of the transmission. It's a ZF gear, HS68A. That is a CAD version drawing and our little starboard mock-up there is going to bolt to an engine jig, an aluminum uh, frame that we will use. This is a sketch of the engine jig. And we will use this engine jig a lot to place the stringers, to set our engine beds for propeller shaft alignment, and for setting the shaft log in place. There it is, set in the engine room. Now, none of the stringers have been removed at this point, so we couldn't actually put it where we wanted to. 454 set on pallets. Look at this velvet drive. That is a 22 inch long from bell housing to coupler uh, with a two to one gear reduction. Here is the engine room with the engines removed. We are stripping that engine room clean. That was just a shot of the bridge deck. This is mostly derigging, but we did remove the outboard panels. There was a generator over there. That is our engine jig with the oil pan template. Those off-red rods are for adjusting the, the height and angle. Here I'm cutting out the inboard stringer. I open the hole with a multi-tool fine saw and then insert a 12-inch sawzall blade. I'm using that Sawzall blade because it flexes. And here you can see I leave a 45 degree angle wherever I can. On the inboard stringers, I had to cut 90 degrees. This is blown tabbing up in the cabin. We're gonna address this as well. And here the engine room has been completely stripped of all rigging. And we've removed the stringers that we're gonna replace with Kusa. Nothing in the way really at this point. It will get a complete grind and we're also going to remove the lower half of the bulkheads.
that's a holding tank template. We opted to custom build a holding tank. This was a template for a off the shelf system that was only 10 gallons. We discovered we could fit about a 40 gallon tank in the same space. This is some grinding in the engine room. We're removing all the layers and loose stuff. I fortunately was just involved with making sure this was done to our standards. This is nearly complete. Paint removed. Here's a quick sketch of the engine bed concept. This is the engine jig set in place for the very first time with the stringers out of the way. The jig is set with a two degree nose up. We are shooting for a 10 degree shaft angle. The inboard stringers will set just inside the old stringers and the outboard stringers will also set just outside the old stringers. This is not the final uh, location. We will be determining that very soon, but there is space behind the coupler and there's space in front of the engine to move forward and back. Uh, we want to keep on the same center of gravity as the 454s. These are the two sheets of half inch Kusa. They're 20 pound density. I prep the panels with 36 grit on that eight inch DA and then blow it dry before I prime. I then use vinyl ester to prime the panels. I'm going to lay 1708 and then one ounce chop strand mat. I consider the mat a sacrificial layer. It just finishes the 1708. This is an example of the phenolic core rollers that I used. That mark is the center of the block. It's 24 and 5 eighths from the coupler. We did tent the boat with shrink wrap. It is much cooler inside there. And here we are back at the shop. Flip the panels over. They're prepped with 36 grit and then blown with compressed air until no dust can be seen blowing off the panel. It's very important. And now we're going to prime these. In this, I've pre-mixed about a quart of vinyl ester resin at in between 1.75 and 2% catalyst. I use the MEK calculator that I created. It's at vernice.com slash MEK. Very handy tool. Basically, I just poured it out down the center of the panel a pint on this panel and a pint on the other panel and just spread it out. You can kind of hear when it sounds like smacky. It's about the right consistency. When it's not making any noise, you're in a pool. And when you hear that smacky sound, it's, it's thin, it's sticky. That's what I go by anyway. And you just want to wet out any dry spots. This is priming Kusa. I had prepped the surface already with 36 grit, took compressed air to blow all the loose dust out very, very thoroughly. And then now here we are priming. Jump to the second panel. I'd flip that bucket with that little spacer so it runs down the inside there. I grab all my buckets from that label, that logo. Keep them clean on the one side. Okay, so this is just a primer. Once this gels, I will lay a layer of 1708. I have these laying on the floor on a thick layer of bisqueen. The floor is very flat in this warehouse. And these panels actually came out perfectly flat. Uh, I couldn't be more pleased with how true they came out. This whole process took about five minutes of rolling time. 
if I took the preparation, added that in, maybe a total of 10 minutes. But what it does is it soaks into all the pores and Kusa is very porous. It also bonds to all the fiberglass filaments that are exposed. And if you've ever touched Kusa core, you've felt fiberglass filaments. They are present. I believe it actually wicks into those filaments a little bit. Another thing it does is if you were to lay 1708 directly on this panel dry and then wet it out, the Kusa would actually absorb some of that resin from the layer, the bottom side, and steal resin from the 1708. You wouldn't see it happening, but it would be doing it. And that could cause the laminate to be dry where it needs to be properly saturated the most. Yeah, that's looking good right there. Now I didn't save this roller. At some point you gotta weigh out the cost of acetone versus the cost of the roller. And this would contaminate a large amount of acetone. I did prime those and as the vinyl ester gelled, I went ahead and did the layout. And now here we are back in the boatyard. I am templating uh, the landing for the engine box there. I'm also templating the bulkhead section that we're going to remove in, in great detail, obviously there. These pictures are mostly for my own reference. Um, once this is all cut out, all we have is these pictures and these templates to uh, put it back together exactly how it was. And we also may make some changes or improvements. And one of those improvements would be to change this landing into a gutter system that sheds water. We would actually shed it to the outboard side there and keep water from running down the front of the bulkhead, but keep water off the engine mostly. And here are the two templates. You can see I did some location marks to show where they actually line up. And I can use this to cut the bulkhead at the shop after the layup's complete on that Kusa panel. And we'll bring it back here and fit. And you'll see in later pictures as progress goes on that um, we don't leave gaps on the side of the bulkhead. It will be filled with putty or epoxy putty or vinyl ester putty, but there will not be air gaps. That's the reason we go through the trouble of making these templates so accurate. And it also saves time in the long run. We did end up fitting this quite a bit in place. This flexible template will slide in and out very easily. A very rigid panel is a different story. We took a chainsaw, a brand new electric chainsaw, and we hollowed out any of the rotted wood we could reach. Uh, we actually got to where there was light colored brown wood at some point. Now, I can't lie, this was actually pretty fun. Uh, chainsaws are fun in general, but this is very precise and you have a lot of control versus a gas chainsaw. It worked very, very well for what we're trying to do. I'll do a whole video on this. Like and subscribe and you'll catch 15 minutes of that. And here is the starboard template flipped over to the port side and it actually fits pretty good um, especially right here it fits very well and there were some tight spots down there tight up against the aluminum rail but not much
And again, also the, the top piece, that's the template for the landing. So we can put it back how it was. We may straighten it out though. And this is the template laying out on the pavement. There's the template laying on the half inch Kusa finished panel. And here I use a hole saw to cut the top of the stringer. I prefer round corners whenever possible. I use a razor knife to mark my lines from the template. It's 36 grit. The one ounce chopped gram mat that I put over the 1708 was basically a sacrificial layer just to soak up any excess resin and they give us a smooth enough surface to gel coat to. Like this guy. Watch this dude. Uh oh. This guy. Sneaking around. This is sanded with the soft pad, uh, 36 grit and then 80 grit. And it's pretty flat with no fairing compound. I can gel coat directly on this with a couple coats of gel coat. There's the 80 grit soft pad. There's both of them ready for gel coat. And that's gonna be it for today. Keep uh, checking back, there's a lot more to come. And if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, maybe share with a friend, and I'll keep doing it. Thank you.